Welcome back to Kobo Co Fitness. Thank you so much for 1 million subscribers. I'm gonna say more about that towards the end of the video. If you haven't seen part one of this series, you need to watch that. In that video, I covered the ground basics. In fact, the real, real ones, they're already on the floor doing glute bridges before I even start this video. So this video is specifically for my people that are trying to grow their booty. You're trying to get that question mark booty. I'm gonna help you in this video, especially if you're the kind of person that you have been working hard. You've been going to the gym every day. You've been doing lunges, you've been doing squats, you've been been doing the most still your booty stay like this but no shade all booties are good because guess what you can still sit down you can still walk my point is it doesn't matter the size or shape of your booty you are still beautiful still gorgeous still go turn heads if you have confidence this video is not to say that oh you need to look a certain way to be happy this video is just saying if you want to have a question mark booty I got you and I have tips for you this video is literally going to be life-changing once you know the things that are holding you back you can stop struggling and you start seeing results Shout out to everyone that has done my booty program and sent me pictures if you haven't done my booty program Or you're not aware of my booty program now you are aware go to kabokofitness.com start a free trial See if it's right for you the amount of work that you are doing in your workout is not enough for your particular genetic potential let me explain when you're trying to grow your booty your training volume is just basically how hard did you work how much did you do how many reps did you do how many times did you do each exercise so if you are working out you are doing your best but you're not seeing results it's totally possible that maybe the amount of work you are doing during your workouts is not enough for your particular genetic potential maybe you need to do more reps during your workouts if you're doing my workouts maybe during your 30 seconds you need to try to push yourself to do more or maybe you need to up your weight a little bit you need to modify these variables to see what it is that's holding your back here's the problem anytime you don't fully extend your hip with your glute bridge or you don't go as low as you can with your squat without hurting yourself you are reducing the amount of time that your muscle is under tension you got to get that time under tension so for example if you're doing glute bridges that time when you are raising your butt off of the floor all the way up to fully extend your hips so that you have a straight line from your knees to your chin, that is the time under tension. That process of squeezing your booty up. When you hold your booty up in the air like that and you are squeezing and you're holding and you are shaking and you are quaking, that is time under tension. When you release your glutes to bring your booty back down and you're going through that slow controlled movement, that is time under tension. Anytime you don't fully extend your hip and anytime you rush to bring your booty back down to the floor, you are cheating yourself of time under tension. You need that time under tension. You gotta go slow, control that movement, making sure that you're going through your full range of motion. Nice and slow, raise, squeeze. Oh my gosh, this next mistake is huge. Y'all that do my program or any booty program, and then you get results, and then you think you can just stop training your glutes, no, it doesn't work like that. You know how like you have acne sometimes and then you find something that works and then you use it and then your skin gets clear and then you stop using it and then all the acne comes back? It is exactly the same way with exercise. You don't get to stop. Why can't you stop? Because if you stop, your booty is going to go back to the way it was before you started. The technical term for this is reversibility. It's not all bad news. The good news is that the amount of work you have to do to grow your booty is way more than the amount of work you have to do to maintain your booty. So on my program, we are training glutes three times a week. But to maintain your booty, you don't have to train three times a week. Twice a week is usually good enough for most people. Some people can get away with even once a week. You don't have enough booty days in your schedule. Some people can train booty twice a week and their booty will actually grow. Unicorns, I'm not one of those people. Three times a week is my standard recommendation. With exercise, you have to experiment. You are unique and so you can start from my recommendations and then adjust to see what works for you. And now you're probably wondering, okay, if you're training booty three times a week, what about your other body parts? What about them abs? What about the arms? What about the heart? All of that stuff. You can train those other parts on the other days of the week. You can also decide that for a period of time, you're focusing just on your booty. And after you're done and you get your results, then you resume your full body training where you're training your entire body. By now, we all know that 
Squats are not the main exercise that grow your booty. Squats are important, but they are not the main part of any program that is aiming to get that question mark booty. Squats will help you warm up for your booty workout. Squats will strengthen your legs so that you have balance in your body. If you're doing anything like squats, lunges, for a lot of you, there is a tendency to be using the wrong muscles. This is when we say people have sleepy glutes or that their glutes are not activated. One of the ways you can work around this is to pay attention to your feet and really try to make sure that you are driving through your heels, especially with squats, to make sure that your heels are making full contact with the floor. If you're unable to do this, you are probably activating your quads, that's your the muscles in front of your thighs, or you're activating your hamstrings, that's the muscles in the back of your thigh, or you're activating your calf muscles, which is the muscle in the back of your leg that you see very prominent in runners and it's just so sexy. Those are good muscles, you want to strengthen them, but they're not your booty. Your head and your torso has a lot of weight to it. So when you're squeezing to stand up, you should feel your booty doing the work to raise your body back up. If you are not able to do that, there's a, another mistake toward the end of this video that I'm gonna talk about that's really going to help you with that. But before we get into any of that, I wanted to give you some quick tips that you can use to correct this mistake if you're the kind of person where you can't feel your glutes when you're doing your exercises or you find it difficult to engage gauge your butt or you find it difficult to really drive your heel into the ground when you're doing your squats or your lower body exercises, be careful of any shoes where the front of the shoe is curved upward. This is something that is just bad for the feet in general, but it's even worse when you're trying to do an exercise that requires you to keep your feet flat on the floor and especially drive down your heel as you're doing your squat. So if you have, if you take a look at your, your training shoes, if they tend to curve in the front to make your toes go up they could be causing some imbalances instead of wearing those types of shoes you can either do them barefoot or just wearing some nice socks with good grip at the bottom or you can wear flat tennis shoes or you can wear a pair of converses these are the kinds of shoes that will help you really get your feet right if you follow this advice that I'm giving it will help you with activating your booty it will help you with maximizing your results it will help you not waste time doing stuff that just doesn't work a lot of people think that when they work out the actual workout is the most important thing I am a personal trainer it is literally my job to tell you that working out is important however equally important is rest it is during the rest period that your body really works its magic I love the human body like it does some amazing stuff and one of those things is repairing your muscles while you rest just do the workout and rest while you're resting your body is flushing out all the crap it is repairing muscles it is breaking down fat cells it is replenishing glycogen stores don't be that person that you've not worked out for six months and then you just decide one day you're just gonna go ham every day at the gym 45 minutes I commend you but I also discourage you from doing that. Your body needs time to rest, especially if you're trying to grow a muscle. If you have a child, then you know that during those first years of their life, they're basically just sleeping the whole time. Same thing with your muscles. You have to give them plenty of time to rest. Do not work the same muscle every single day, non-stop. There may be some people that this does not apply to them, but for most of us, muscles need that time to rest, recover, and rebuild. Don't skip your rest days. If you must exercise on your rest days, exercise other muscle groups. So if you're doing a lot of lower body workouts, on your rest days, you can do things like your ab exercises, your planks, you could do your upper body work, your pull-ups, your push-ups, that kind of stuff that doesn't really engage those lower body muscles too much. Another very common mistake is not squeezing and not pulsing. What is squeezing, what is pulsing? If you've been doing my workouts, You've heard me say this, squeeze your booty. And you've also seen me show you exercises that involve pulsing. Those pulsing exercises are difficult. If you're doing my booty program, you will not see those exercises until later in the program. With squeezing, what you are doing is you are literally using your mind to tell your booty muscles to become rock 
hard. It's a good idea to incorporate these types of exercises into your routine. If you're doing my workout plans or my workout videos, I normally include these exercises for you so you don't have to think about it. But if you make your own workouts or you're doing somebody else's workouts, you have to remember to do these types of exercises. There are so many ways to incorporate these into your workouts. You can even make it part of your warm up routine instead of doing full squats, especially if your knees bother you, you can just do a squat pulse instead and use that opportunity to really practice that mind muscle connection. I'm afraid to say this. There are a lot of people out here with goals that are just not realistic. A lot of the photos you see on Instagram, in newspapers, in magazines, they are photoshopped photos. A lot of people have got work done and you can't always detect it. My advice to you is to love yourself. Don't try to grow your booty for any reason other than just a genuine love and appreciation for a question mark booty. That was a little over the top. Be realistic with your goals. Appreciate what you have. Love yourself. What you have is good. The next mistake is missing out on everyday opportunities to use your glutes. When you're standing at the in the line at the supermarket or at the mall or at the grocery store, when you are getting into your car, getting out of your car, getting into a, a chair, standing up from a chair, when you're sitting in a chair, going up and down the stairs, there are so many opportunities throughout the day to engage your glutes. All these opportunities are micro opportunities to activate them and get a little bit of a workout in. You can be laying on your back, watching the skies, squeeze your booty. That's a little booty exercise. Missing these opportunities is a mistake, not because you are so obsessed with your booty that you're constantly thinking about it. It's just something that, um, it's a, it's a missed opportunity. When you're sitting in your chair, you can do sitting clenches. When you're laying on your back on the floor, you can do lying clenches. When you are about to stand up from a chair, you can use that opportunity to do the mind-muscle connection and squeeze your glutes. There are so many micro opportunities throughout the day, throughout your life, throughout your regular activities to activate your booty and really get things going. If you haven't watched part one of this series, go and watch it. If you know, you know. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Check out my booty program on my website, kabokofitness.com. You can start a 10-day free trial. Oh, I forgot. I said I was going to talk more about hitting 1 million subscribers. Thank you for sharing my videos, telling your friends and family about Kaboko Fitness. Thank you for getting us to this point where there's a million subscribers on this YouTube channel. There was a point in time when I realized that actually Kaboko Fitness is not about me. Kaboko Fitness is about us and what we represent. So I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I guess I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of your journey to becoming the best baddest version of yourself possible. It, it is such a privilege to me and I love you guys. I genuinely do. I love what I do. It's fun for me. I wanted to make like a separate video talking about, oh my God, we hit 1 million subscribers. But when I thought about it, I just realized that, you know what, actually I don't want to. And I feel like if I make that video, it would just be because I have seen other people make those videos and I feel like I should make that video, but I don't want to make that video because those of you that have been with me since I had 1,000 subscribers till now, you know the story. You've seen it all. A lot of you were celebrating in your houses without me. You didn't invite me to your celebration. <laughs> A lot of you were happy for me and happy for us. And so we're all just going to be happy in our own way. And I don't want to make a video that's just all about, whoa, look at me, 1 million subscribers. I may make a video showing the 1 million subscriber award when it comes. I don't know if I will, but I just wanted to at least take this time to just say thank you directly and let you know that I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you do. I'm grateful for you and I have to go because my makeup is about to be destroyed. <laughs> thank you for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.